Welcome to highlights of this year's fourth grade final between Mossman and Sutherland, played at the Kensington Oval. Mossman finished first and Sutherland second during the minor round, and their match uh, was washed out. So this final really meant that they had something to prove. Mossman won the toss and decided to bat. Conditions were perfect, and it was David Fordham to take strike for Mossman, and the Sutherland left-hander, Harvey, was opening the bowling. Keep your eye on David Fordham. This is one of the briefest appearances since Andrew Hilditch played his last test for Australia. Mossman couldn't have started in worse fashion. Harvey traps Fordham leg before wicket for a dark off the second ball of the innings. <laughs> Harvey greeted Harlan with a short one and he responded by planting him high over square leg for four. On the other end, Jones found young Jason Gallion's edge, but the chance went begging in the slips quarter. After an impressive half century in the semi-final, Gallion celebrated his let off with a neat deflection for two. But a century crusher from Harvey had the youngster all at sea. And as Harvey contemplated his next delivery, young Gallion got some words of wisdom from the seasoned campaigner Highland. The veteran Merv Black replaced Jones from the southern end and Gallion relished the change of pace. A midfield in the covers by Sutherland skipper Tom Eisman allowed Highland yet another boundary. And Gallion showed some aggression with this pull shot off Black as Bossman stays their recovery. But Merv Black struck with the first ball after drinks. Gallion departed at 2 for 52. New batsman Guy Mankey, despite an injured elbow, started in typical style with a crashing cover drive. And another. And when Harlan played this savage square cut off black, he didn't bother even running. Mankey also showed that he can score on either side of the wicket. Change of bowling, Coleman to Highland. Then it was the hard-hitting Mankey's turn. He continued his assault on Black. And then on Coleman. Highlands 50 came up in just 65 minutes with six boundaries. Mankey's was even quicker as the century partnership was posted in just 68 minutes. Mankey's 60 included 10 fours and a six, but a rash shot off young Tony Hale off the last ball before lunch saw Mankey depart. Mossman three for 154. Highland continued on after lunch on his way to a very valuable 81. But the young 14-year-old spinner Hale struck another vital blow as Highland held out to Wren in the deep. Maybe the end of the road for the club's leading run-getter Barry Highland, the end of a great career. But worse to come, next ball Lee Della goes caught behind by Lamb off Hale, although he didn't seem all that impressed. Tony Reid, promoted for the final, set about arresting Mossman's turmoil in the middle order. And Steve Wilmot matched his skills with Merv Black. Slowly, Reid and Wilmot kept the scoreboard ticking. Wilmot finally hit out, trying to break up the close infield. Their partnership yielded just 15, but every run was vital. Finally, Black got rid of Wilmot, who played on for just seven. 
And next ball, Sean Skinner, Phil LBW. Mossman five for 181, and Merv Black on a hat trick. And Steve Chitty obliged Black with his third hat trick in a 30 year career. But it seemed to be all too much for wicketkeeper Ken Land. But a great moment for Merv Black in possibly his last match. Well, Merv, this is hat trick number three. What recollections have you got of the other two? Well, the other two, Dave, was uh, the first game uh, for Cumberland in third grade against uh, Mossman at uh, Mossman Oval. It was a few years ago, 1956-57. It was uh, seventh and eighth ball of the, of the previous over and the first ball the next over. And then uh, I think the next one was 74-75 against uh, Mossman in first grade at uh, Rawson Oval. And then the other one, which was Saturday. So it'd be fair to say you're not all that uh, unhappy playing against Mossman? No, I've got to play against him every couple of weeks. <laughs> Merv, I believe there was one other hat-trick that went astray again against Mossman. Yeah, that was uh, no names, no pack as far as the umpire is concerned, but uh, it was uh, the, the year after I'd taken the first grade one in 74, 75, and we were back at Mossman Oval, and uh, Ian Napper was the captain, and I said to him, on the way out in the car, I said, what are the chances for a uh, hat-trick today? He said, oh, 200 cans to one. So, uh, anyway, as the game went on, and it's in progress, and they were seven down, they needed about 30 or 40 runs to win, and Ian said, better the bowl. So, at that stage of the game, they were still eight ball overs, and uh, two or three balls had passed, so anyway, uh, this young bloke, the two Weatherton boys were playing, and the first one in uh, got an edge, Al Campbell took the catch behind, and they were eight down. The other Weatherton boy came in, and, uh, he got another nick, Alan Campbell took the text. So I turned around to Ian and he was white as your shirt and he said, I'm not well. So, so anyway, uh, coming again and Sandy Rackless uh, number 10, or 11, whatever the case was, and uh, he gets a big edge, so it was an A-ball call. Uh, it wasn't for my uh, fault of mine, but it was uh, Brian O'Dowd had his uh, foot in the cut portion of the wicket. So anyway, uh, as it turned out, Sandy got a nick again, Alan Campbell took the catch behind, so it was four on the trot. But Mr. Hattrick, so Alan Campbell, uh, uh, Ian Apple was relieved, so uh, he saved himself 200 cans. And I did make a statement to one of the umpires, it was anyway close, so I go your halves, and he said, I don't drink, I said, oh, you can always sell them. But uh, well, I won't mention the umpire. Tony Reid watched from the other end while the three wickets fell, but despite Black's hat trick, Reid's confidence wasn't eroded. He found a solid ally in keeper Richard Sarkis. Score crept to 193 for eight as Mossman pondered on their change of fortunes in the second session. Sarkis gave them some glimmer of hope with his classic back cut. But just as they were getting on top, Reed was well caught by Lamb off Young Hale for 13. Which left the job for skipper Lee Clapham and Sarkis for the last wicket stand. Clapham oozed confidence. Thump Coleman down the ground as the vital last wicket stand added 30. Clapham needed only a not out for the club's batting average, but an old fashioned full toss from Harvey proved his undoing, and Mossman's innings ended at 223. Sutherland's start was nearly as disastrous as Mossman's. Coleman, a century maker in the first round against Mossman, goes for two. Skipper Tom Iston, despite the bad start, took up the challenge. He was helped by a Barry Highland misfield at mid-off, a rather unusual sight, but three more to the Sutherland skipper. Della to Iston, and he crashes one right over cover for six. The left-hander Skinner gets similar treatment from the other end. The scorers Ron Davies and Kathy Colley worked overtime, keeping up with his swashbuckling innings. Della tried to knock him right out of business. But Iston was equally intent on knocking the Mossman bowlers out of the attack. Harvey at the other end was just the silent partner in their stand of 73.
However, Iceton was still supplying the fireworks in a great knock. Even Skinner's attempted bouncer held no fears for the Cavalier opener. Harvey, meantime, kept the scoreboard ticking over with a series of deflections. His only full-blooded shot saw Chitty spill a difficult chance at backward square leg. David Fordham had pulled a hamstring, but it could not have come from running between wickets. Chitty to Iston and the start of a costly over as Iston posted a great half century that had put Mossman right on the defensive after their early breakthrough. His innings was dotted with eight boundaries and a six. so often this season, Chitty bounced back as Tony Reeds holds a screamer at short leg. Undaunted, Iston continued his onslaught. But eventually he miscued off Della and opposing captain Clapham holds the catch at mid-on. Then down came the rain and that coupled with bad light, play was abandoned for the day. With Sutherland 3 for 87, the game was in the balance, still 136 runs in arrears. And play was delayed on the second day. However, it gave young 14-year-olds Tony Hale and Jason Gallian a chance to meet one of Australia's great all-rounders, Alan Davidson. But some found other ways to fill in the day as a decision was being made on when play would start. However, judging from Sutherland's dressing room, there were no limits to their stakes. But if play didn't resume, they had more to lose. Eventually, after several inspections, umpires Tom Brooks and Michael Jay agreed play would start at 4.15, leaving Sutherland with 24 overs to get the required 136 for victory. And for Ken Lamb, his injured leg suggested he may struggle when it was his turn to bat. Mossman had the job to contain Sutherland, who still had seven wickets at hand as they began their chase. However, they started disastrously. Graham brilliantly run out for a duck by Wilmot's throw, four for 88. Things could have been worse. Della spills a return catch. And Rin survives this run out chance, although he looked well short of his ground. Smith looked confident as he and Rin added 22 for the fifth wicket. Eventually, Della saw Rin on his way with an off-cutter, Sutherland 5 for 110. Then Jones fell victim to another sharp piece of fielding from Wilmot, leaving umpire Tom Brooks in no doubt. The injured Ken Lamb wasn't about to give up without a fight. But on nine, he held out to Steve Chitty in the deep, and Sutherland was struggling. New batsman Harvey turned Della to fine leg, but a brilliant throw from Jason Gallian found him well short of his ground on his second run. And at the other end, Skinner gave both the batsman and keeper Richard Sarkis something to think about in the failing light. He got Smith soon after, as Sutherland slumped further into a hole. the veteran Merv Black, the hat-trick hero, chimed in with a brisk, if not sometimes unorthodox, 19. He even refused the offer of life. Merv wanted to see it out in possibly his last match. He greeted Highland's entry into the attack with scant respect. But he did show respect for his elders. At the other end, young Tony Hale showed commitment and confidence, belying his 10 to 14 years. He remained four not out. However, the end was nigh. Black lashed out a chitty, and when Della held the catch, Mossman had the title. It was to be their first in 10 years, and the victory champers were sweet. Just reward for not having lost a match in the entire season. Association President Alan Davidson made the presentation. Whether it's a test match 
whether it's a first grade or a fourth grade cricket match, when you come to a final, there is something special about it. Let's face it that uh, it was unfortunate because the, we couldn't get on the ground. But on the other hand, I think you'll all agree that you've both played wonderful cricket. I think the excitement even of that last hour was something that uh, I think you'll all treasure for a long, long time. And uh, I hope you'll all remember too that it is a wonderful game. It's played, you know, by young fellows such as Merv Black, who I believe has played his last game today. Uh, Merv might be uh, 48 years young, because, but I think uh, really that's the best way to describe it because he is still young at heart and he wants to offer something to cricket. Uh, to all the people that participated in this game, I, I'd just like to congratulate them. I'm delighted to meet a couple of young players, uh, one who's taken 49 wickets in uh, the Sutherland team in his first year at the age of 14 and a young fellow that's... Uh, And also to a young boy that played with Mossman also that I believe has occupied the crease for about 16 and a half hours already this year. There's our future and I think this is the great thing that uh, the lower grades do provide that opportunity for young players to play with older experienced players and at the same time who knows that one day they may go on to the very big heights that everyone hopes for and, and of course uh, in my case, I really, at the age of 14, I was convinced I was going to play for Australia. I just hope they have the same ambition. But uh, to you, Lee, this is your day. The Reed Cup, I might add, and this is a, a really magnificent old cup. Uh, it was presented to the association when it was known as the New South Wales Cricket Union way back in 1890-91 and uh, by John Reed, Esquire, and uh, I think you'll all agree, and I think the lovely old fella up here, he's even got the mustachio and everything else. It's uh, really something. But to you, uh, Lee, to your team, congratulations. I know that uh, it's a great honour to win any competition, and I know all your boys are very proud of it. thing about cricket is whether the competitor that you're playing against is 14 or 48 they still give it their best shot and I think that last partnership sort of epitomized that the one thing I would like to say to the Sutherland team is that this game has probably been played in the best spirit of any team, any game that we played this year and we really respect you for that thank you very much Sutherland Club and the Sutherland fourth grade side, I'd like to congratulate Mossman on winning. Obviously it was disappointing from our point of view the way things turned out today, but uh, nevertheless you've won the trophy and as minor premiers I get to a certain degree, you know, you were, uh, you finished higher than us. You haven't lost a game all season, so to a certain extent you do deserve it. Um, I certainly <laughs> reciprocate your comments about the spirit of the game. It was played in a very good spirit. We've had a couple of not so good games ourselves, so we certainly appreciated that too. Once again, congratulations, and uh, we'll be in there trying to win it back from you next year. The stars of the Bosman win were Barry Hyland and Guy Mankey with their century partnership. And Lee Della's four wicket haul to become the club's leading wicket taker for the 85-86 season. Sutherland's heroes were the veteran Merv Black with his hat trick and young Tony Hale and Tom Iston's flamboyant innings will be long remembered in a losing side. But 1985-86 was to be the year of the Wales from Mossman Middle Harbour.